Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's river tutorial. What you see in the vise is a pimped up hare's ear. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vise then is a Hanak H 260 barbless hook. This one's at size 12. It's on a heavy wire and it's in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Semperfly and it's the Nano Silk at 12O. And the first thing I'm going to do, as always with these Nano Silks, is get a little bit of super glue onto the shank of the hook. Now the hair's ears are a well established pattern and uh, it's obviously served many anglers very well over the years. Uh, and there's there's loads of variations of it around, but um, this uh, this is just a little pimped up version, a little variation for you. So I've just run my thread down to where a barb would be, and I'm going to remove my waist end. Now I'm actually going to be using a hair's mask um, for for most of the materials of this fly, and the first thing I want to do is just find a little bit of tailing. So I want some of the longer fibres from the bottom of the cape. Now I could probably pick it out with my fingers, but what I tend to do is just go in with the points of my scissors and snip off the tiniest bit from as near to the, the bottom as I can get it. And even doing this actually, uh, I always end up with a clump like that and I don't need all that, but what I'm going to do is grab the very tips of the fibres and try and pull some of that out and then what I'm left with is just a very very small clump of hair's ear and I'm just going to catch that in a couple of loose turns to see what it's like and that looks not too bad and then I'm going to come back a little more like so next in wide open turns I'm going to come all the way back up to about just where I want my thorax to start. And what I'm going to do is create a dubbing loop with my thread. Now, I rarely do this um, because I much prefer to use the split thread technique. But on this occasion, this is the only way of doing it really to make it work. Unless you catch in thread at the other end. So I'm just taking great care to position it properly. And I'm going to come in with my dubbing spinner. It doesn't see the light of day very much. So it'll be pleased to get an out in today. And then I can just catch that on like so. And I'm just going to hang that off my little handle and my vise. Just to keep it out of the way for the moment. Next then, I'm going to add my body material. What I'm using is some uh, Opal Mirage to give it that little bit of glint that you saw at the start of the video. And uh, with, with this, I've only got the large at the minute, I must, must buy the medium and the small. But just to, to make do with what I've got, I've cut a little slant in the Opal Mirage. And before I catch it in, I'm just going to add a little bit of wax to my Nano Silk. And then I can come in a couple of turns, just catch in the point and then come all the way back up to my thorax. Now I want to get a little taper, it doesn't need to be much, but just to keep that body nice and even. And then I can bring my mirage around the body, like so. And that's probably going to do me actually. I'll just come over one more turn and then I can always work backwards from the thorax. Once I'm sure that's tied into place, a couple of turns in front, I can come in and just remove my excess material. So that's looking not too bad. I'm just going to bring my thread up and tidy this bit up. And that's me got my body into place. Now next, what I'm going to do from my hair's mask here, 
I'm going to pinch some fibers just with my fingers from the ears. You can see it's already a little bit threadbare for where I've done uh, lots of these flies in the past. Uh, I really like them. They're, they're, they're great little fish catchers, these. I like fishing it. If I'm fishing nymphs, it's a great wee fly for the top dropper, actually. Now, I don't need very much. Uh, as you can see, I've got very little in my fingers and what I'm going to do is transfer that over to a clip just going to rearrange it a little bit sorry you can't see what's going on but it's probably a bit out of focus but I'm just arranging it so that when it sits in the clip I've got it just about in the middle let me see if I can show that up to the camera so you can see so I've got a very small amount of dubbing into my clip Next thing then, I can bring down my dubbing spinner and before I get the whole thing on the go, what I'm going to do is add a tiny bit of UV resin to the Opal Mirage where my body's going to be. doesn't need to be much and this will work its way around the fly. I'm not overly fussy about it. What it does though is just keep my rib in place when I start to bring it over. So I'll pick up my dubbing loop, grab my material, catch it into place, like so. Now a lot of that's actually pinged out, but I think it's probably still enough for what I require. Let's spin it up and see what we've got. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. Because at the end of the day, I only want a very little amount of fibre shown out here. Just give it a keep spinning it. Nice and tight you want this. And then what I can do is any sort of loose stuff that's come away can just come away. Now, there's very little here. And I'm going to bring it out to the side so you can see how small the brushes I've made. Now, what I'm going to do is just continue to turn just at the back end of the fly here until I bring the dubbing up to the fly. So this is the last turn on the tail. The next turn I'm going to bring up over the Mirage Tinsel. And obviously, through the, UV, the little layer of UV resin. And I'm not worried that some of the fibres are going to get caught down. Because it's so thin that you'll still see that glint. And what I aim to get is three turns of this. And I've just about managed it. Despite making a little bit of a mess of um, placing the dubbing initially. So the last turn will come up onto the thorax area. And I'll catch that with a few wraps of thread. And before I snip that off, I'm going to get a few turns in front. Then I can remove that. Now, very often I, um, I forget to cure it. But on this occasion, I've remembered. <laughs> so just cure off that little bit of resin. And as I say, that'll just stop your rib moving up and down on the opal mirage or coming to bits actually once you start catching a few fish with a fly so just ensure that's uh, completely cured then next we're going to catch in our thorax cover and all I'm using for a thorax cover is some uh, pheasant tail it's just natural I've already snipped off um, a little bit here that I've got and what I want to do is I want this mottled bit as the thorax cover so I'm going to trim all the way up to the top there then I can simply lay that on and with some loose turns just to manipulate it into place and then I can come back 
leaving plenty of room for my thorax. Now I've already got a little bit of spiky debris from uh, the body, but I'm just going to leave that because it's going to help me. Next, again, I'm going to come in with my hair's mask and just pinch some fibres from the middle. Some of the longer fibres you want for this, so it pulls out a bit when you dub it on. Just be very gentle. You don't, again, you don't need a great deal. And you can see I've got myself a little bit of dubbing here. And then I can come in and dub it onto the thread. Uh, if I've got too much, and I, th I think I might, I can always remove some. Then I'm going to come in at the base of my thorax and then just start building a little thorax hump. And that, as it happens, seemed to be just about perfect. I'll bring my thread to the front of the eye there and then with a thorax cover I'm going to bring that over trap it in with a couple of turns and then what I can do next is just pull everything to the rear and build my head once I'm happy that that's clamped down I can just grab the remainder of the pheasant tail and just pull it away it's very brittle near the point so that's not going to make any odds. Then a little bit of uh, UV resin on the thread. And I can come in with the whip finish tool. Now I say this is for the river and uh, it will work very well on rivers but it also works extremely well in larger sizes uh, when you're boat fishing or from the bank it's very light, it's not weighted, you can weight this if you want I dare say um, you know a little lead underbody but what I find that does is it bulks up the fly and uh, for this pattern I don't want a lot of bulk and the last thing you've got to do is just come in at the sides and tease out your thorax. I say the last thing, there is one more job that will just make the fly last a little bit longer and that's to add a tiny bit of resin just to the thorax cover. So pheasant tail is very, very brittle and any help it can get surviving a few fish teeth is, is worthwhile having. So just a little layer of UV resin and then just cure that off and you've got a very buggy hair's ear. But obviously it's got that attractive little shine as well which uh, gives it a little something else going on. So I hope that was of some use to you. It's a great wee fly. If you're fishing in shallow water uh, this will do your service thanks very much for watching uh, if you've already subscribed to the channel thanks very much and if you haven't subscribed as yet please think about clicking that button i would really appreciate your support